In this clip, we will cover time value calculations related to multiple cash flows. Specifically, here is what we'll do. So let's start with the future value of an ordinary annuity. Say you plan to invest $100 at the end of every year for three years. So the timeline looks like this. So if this is our timeline, we have $100 at the end of every year for three years and we want to calculate the future value over here. The first step is to clear everything. So we do that. Then we enter the number of years. So n is 3. The interest rate is 10. The present value is 0. So we don't really have any cash flow at time 0. So the present value is 0. These annuity payments are 100. So we put in 100 payment and then we compute the future value. That gives us 331. Next, we look at the future value of an annuity due. With an annuity due, the assumption is that the cash flow happens at the start of each period. So here is the situation. You invest $100 now. So at time zero, you invest 100, then 100 at the end of year one. So at the end of year one, you invest 100 again, and then 100 at the end of year two. So we have three payments, but the first payment is at the start of this period. The second payment is here. The third payment is here. And we want the future value at the end of year three. So we want the future value at this point in time. When we solve this problem on the calculator, the first step is to put the calculator in begin mode. The default is end mode, which assumes that each cash flow happens at the end of a period. With begin mode, the assumption is that the cash flow happens at the start of each period. So first of all, we clear our registers. Then to put the calculator in begin mode, we hit second and begin. So notice this says end, which is the default. To change this from end to begin mode, we hit second set. So notice we are now in begin mode and then we quit out of this by hitting second quit. So notice when we are in begin mode, the calculator shows begin mode up here. When the calculator is in end mode, then nothing is shown. But now we are in begin mode, which means that each cash flow is happening at the start of a period. So now we plug in the numbers. So this is an annuity due with n equal to 3 because there are 3 payments. So we hit 3n. Then the interest rate is the same. So 10 is uh, interest rate. There is no PV because these 3 payments of 100 will fall under the payment category. The present value is 0. The payment, as I said, is 100. So we have 100 payment. And then we compute the future value. The future value is 364.1. And you can actually convince yourself that if you take each of these three payments, compound it forward, and add the three numbers, you will get 364.1. One confusion that students have is that they think that the future value we just calculated is the future value at point 0.2 but it is actually the future value at the end of year three. Next, present value of an ordinary annuity. You will get $100 at the end of every year for three years, and we need to calculate the present value. So time zero, time one, time two, time three, you are getting $100, $100, and $100, and we want the present value over here. This is an ordinary annuity, so we assume that cash flows are happening at the end of every period. Before you start plugging in the numbers, notice that the calculator is in begin mode, but you are not solving an annuity due problem, so this needs to be changed to end mode. The way you do that is you hit second begin, and you will see begin here because we are in begin mode. To change this back to end mode, you hit second enter. So now you are in end mode and then you quit out. Notice that we don't have anything written up here, which means that we are in end mode. 
now you can plug in the numbers so n is 3 the interest rate is 10 the present value is what we need to calculate the payment is 100 the future value is 0 and you compute the present value and that is the answer we'll now look at the present value of an annuity due say you get hundred dollars now and then again at the end of year one and year two and we want the present value assuming a rate of ten percent so this is an annuity due at time zero you are getting hundred then at time one hundred again and time two hundred so there are three payments n is three the first payment is happening at the start of period one since this is an annuity due question we need to make sure that the calculator is in begin mode here we don't see anything up here which means that the calculator is in end mode so to set to begin mode we do second begin and second set when we quit out of this now we know the calculator is in begin mode we clear the registers and we start entering the data three periods so 3n interest rate is 10 percent the PV is what we calculate the future value is 0 and the payment amount is 100 then we compute PV and we get this answer next compute payments given the present value interest rate and future value you borrow a hundred thousand today at six percent and need to make monthly payments over 30 years what is your monthly payment amount when you are given a figure like this six percent interest rate you assume that this is an annual number and you assume that this is a nominal interest rate monthly payments implies monthly compounding which means that the interest rate per period or per month is 6% divided by 12 which is 0.5% we are also told that we have 30 years and then 12 months per year so the number of periods is going to be 12 months per year times 30 years which is 360 so what we have here is 360 periods 0.5% interest rate per period when you borrow this much amount this is the present value there is no payment being made at the end so the future value is zero and we need to compute the payment amount what you might recognize is that we are calculating these monthly payments which are actually mortgage payments so let's do this on the calculator the calculator is in begin mode but these are payments at the end of every period when you are not told otherwise you can assume that the payments are at the end of a period so the first thing is to go back to end mode we do that by hitting second begin and second set so notice that second begin second set simply allows you to toggle between begin and end mode if we are in end mode then this procedure takes us to begin mode if we are in begin mode then this procedure takes us to end mode so we quit out of this now we are in end mode then we clear the registers and start plugging in the numbers I did the calculation over here but you can also do this if it's slightly complicated so we have 30 into 12 this is 360 360 is the number of periods then the interest rate per period you can do 6% per year divided by 12 which is 0 0.5 this is the interest rate per period the present value in these calculations is the loan amount which is 100,000 the payment is what we calculate the future value is 0 so we now compute the payment and that is 599.55 we'll now calculate a present value given payments and future value 
you will receive hundred dollars at the end of every year for five years in addition you will get a thousand dollars at the end of five years and you are given the interest rate what is the present value now in this case the number of periods is five you will get hundred dollars every year so this is the payment amount there is an additional thousand dollars at the end of five years so that is the future value and we have to compute the present value before we start plugging in the numbers we need to make sure that we are in end mode we don't see any begin written here so we know we are in mode so we are good to go we can then start plugging in 5n the interest rate is 8% so 8 interest rate the present value is what we calculate the payment is 100 the future value is 1000 and we compute the present value and that is 1079.85 we'll now calculate the NPV for uneven cash flows say you are given this cash flow at time 0 we have an outflow of 100 at time 1 an outflow of 50 and then 100 coming in at time 2 nothing at time 3 and 200 at time 4 with uneven cash flows we need to enter the cash flow register and we do that by clicking here on the cash flow button notice it says cash flow equals 0 so this is saying that cash flow at time 0 is 0 there's cash flow at time 1 2 3 and so on now just to be safe the first thing to do is clear all these cash flow registers so we hit second clear work now we know that all the cash flow registers are clear then we start entering the data we can see that cash flow at time 0 is minus 100 so we will put in 100 plus minus and then we hit the enter sign and we then see this equal to this means that the calculator has accepted that the cash flow at time 0 is minus 100 then we hit the down arrow this takes us to cash flow at time 1 here we enter 50 plus minus so that's minus 50 and again we hit enter then we hit down arrow F01 means the frequency the minus 50 is happening once and 1 is the default here so we just accept this and move on then cash flow at time 2 is 100 so we put in 100 enter this has a frequency of 1 so we accept that frequency and move on then cash flow at time 3 is 0 we need to explicitly put in a 0 and say enter so now cash flow at time 3 is 0 here again the frequency is 1 and then the final cash flow is at time 4 so cash flow 4 is 200 and we enter that so now we have entered all our data so we also see that the frequency here is 1 which is the default since we need to calculate NPV we then hit the NPV button and it is now asking us for the interest rate let's say that the interest rate here is 10 percent so we plug in 10 and hit enter and then we hit down arrow again and compute so this is our NPV next we'll come up with the IRR for an uneven cash flow now here I've changed the numbers slightly we still have minus 100 and then minus 50 and then we have 93 times so here as before we enter the cash flow registers and then we want to make sure the registers are clear so we hit second clear work and now we can start entering the data so cash flow 0 is minus 100 100 plus minus enter then down arrow cash flow 1 is minus 50 so 50 plus minus enter and then this has a frequency of 1 so we accept this move on cash flow 2 is 90 so 90 enter but notice that this has a frequency of 3 so we hit down arrow and set the frequency to 3 and enter now we have finished entering the data and we can compute the IRR so we hit down arrow one more time and hit IRR and then we hit compute and this gives us the IRR 
that is it for this segment in the next segment we'll cover statistics and some other miscellaneous functions